Hello everyone, in this video we are going to have a look at a game played by Magnus Carlsen in round 5 of the Granke Chess Classic. So far Magnus Carlsen is playing very exciting chess, a lot of interesting things are happening in his uh, games. And well, in this uh, round he's playing with the black pieces against uh, Germany's number one, Vincent uh, Keimer. It's a very interesting game, Magnus came very well prepared, let's see how it uh, works out. So Vincent uh, starts here the game with a move uh, 1d4 and after knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3. Nowadays at the top level you see top players uh, opting for solid systems like bishop b4, Nimzo Indian or play the move d5 when you get the queen's gambit declined. But now Magnus drops a very nice little surprise by going for the move c5 in fighting White to go for the Benoni type of uh, structures, which is accepted by Keimer. He advances the pawn to d5, black captures, ed5, white recaptures, cd5, and here we have this so-called uh, Benoni structure, which is of course a very uh, popular opening still at club level. It used to be very popular back in the 80s in um, when it was played by uh, various uh, strong players, even Kasparov played it uh, then. Nowadays, it's not often uh, seen anymore. I mean, uh, especially engines, they uh, kind of um, evaluate the position as somewhat favorable for why there's more space. But in a practical game, especially with a short time control with 45 minutes plus 10 seconds increment, things are not so easy. And it's a very interesting way for black to, uh, to play for a win, as we get to see in this uh, game as well. So knight f3, g6, and here Keimer goes for the move bishop f4. It's a solid system, uh, so developing the minor pieces on the queen side uh, first before re revealing the intentions uh, how to uh, go for the setup in the, in the center. So here bishop g7 is played and now if black gets a chance he would like to castle and everything is okay. But queen a4 is considered to be a sort of a critical move to disturb uh, black's development. Uh, you cannot castle here yet. Bishop d7 is the main continuation to stop the check and hit the queen. Now the queen goes back to b3. Interesting moment because both the pawn on b7 as well as the pawn on uh, d6 are uh, under threat. And how are you going to cope with it? I mean, you can still try to uh, defend both pawns by playing a move like a queen c7, but a much more dynamical continuation, much more in the spirit of this opening, is to play as actively as possible. And here, Magnus goes for the move b5. This is also one of the main uh, continuations for, uh, for black, grabbing space on the queen side. And now after bishop takes d6, black is a pawn down. The bishop even prevents black from uh, castling at this point. But the queen comes out to b6, not only to defend the pawn on c5, but the bishop also got to move now. So it goes to e5, and finally black is able to bring its king into safety. So. What is black aiming for in this system? He is a pawn down, but he does have some uh, active uh, play on the queen side with some um, nice pawn moves. He's able to uh, gain tempos to challenge the opponent's pieces. And not uh, less important is that the uh, king is still in the middle. So black is even up in uh, development. And I mean, it's, it's a theoretical line. I'm pretty sure that uh, Keimer had studied this line before, but definitely he didn't expect it in uh, in this game. Uh, so he was already spending quite a bit of, uh, of time. E3 uh, is played here. So now white is about to uh, get the bishop into the game, hits the pawn on uh, b5. But then there is this move uh, c4, attacking the queen on, um, on b3. So that's a good uh, move. The queen goes back to d1 and black continues. Not holding back here, b4, attacking the knight. And that means the knight has to go to a uh, somewhat inferior square. I mean, various moves have been tried here. Knight b1 is still the uh, main continuation and Magnus probably had all even this prepared it for, for this specific game. Now, the pawn on c4 is uh, threatened to be taken. So black gets the bishop to b5. Nice move. And you see that these pawns, they're restricting the mobility of uh, white's uh, pieces. White goes for the move a4, attacks the bishop on b5, capturing en passant is not what you want to do. You want to keep these pawns on the board. So the bishop goes back to, uh, to a6. Now the 
Knight goes to d2, attacking the pawn on c4 one more time. And now the rook comes to c8. So the pawn is attacked twice, but also twice defended by uh, Black's uh, pieces. Rook to c1, attacking the pawn one more time. And here, things are heating up after the move c3. Black is advancing the pawn, hits the knight on d2. And taking the bishop first on a6 would be a serious mistake. Allowing Black to take first on d2 that knight with check, after which the... Bishop on a6 can just be taken. Black will be a piece up. So why, therefore, first got to take on uh, c3. But then black has the chance now to take on f1 first. And that will make it harder for uh, white to get the king into safety uh, very fast. So white decided here to take with the king, which is still the uh, best move. Knight bd7, attacking uh, the bishop. And well, interestingly, Magnus was still following a game of uh, Nodibek Abdusatorov, who uh, played this uh, position three years ago in, uh, in Riga with the black pieces against uh, another Grandmaster Oparin. And in that game, the move Bishop d4 was played, but um, not sure how, uh, how good that is. I mean, you can just play the move Queen a6 check, after which the pawn on d5 is uh, going to be hanging. Oparin played here the move c4, but then after knight takes d5, you do win back one of your pawns with fantastic play as um, you're getting uh, quite some nice play on the um, on the queen side. So in any case, Keimer uh, played a better move. Uh, instead of uh, playing bishop d4, he decided to take on f6. So that just keeps the, the game going. You're fighting for, for tempo moves. So after knight takes f6, uh, white has still to uh, make a decision how to get a king into safety. That's, uh, that's, of course, very, uh, very important, not only for the king, but also that rook on h1 remains out of, uh, out of play. But what to do on the queen side first? I mean, uh, the pawn on uh, b4 can be captured, which was actually played by Keimer. Another very double-edged uh, continuation here is the move c4, which does give white a very nice pawn center. But black also still has an, uh, a passed pawn on, uh, on b4. And after something like queen a6 with the idea to take on uh, d5, if the king goes away, then the knight can come over to, uh, to d7, maybe to c5, maybe to b6 with pressure against the pawns. This is an excellent way for black to try to play for a win. And even though the engine says that maybe white is still a bit better, I feel like this can go either side. It's very complicated position, so very impressive preparation by Magnus. Um, 20 moves of uh, theory. But Keimer, instead of playing the critical move c4, he decided to take on b4, which is not bad. Magnus decided to give a check here on, um, on a6. White played the move b5, attacking uh, the queen, solving the check with a, with a tempo move. But after rook takes c1, queen takes c1, okay, there is queen takes uh, a4. And here you see that um, black still is uh, two pawns uh, down, but the pawns on b5 and uh, d5, they're quite vulnerable. And uh, you cannot uh, really defend them uh, here. If you if you do play something like queen c4, there is queen d1 check. King is in trouble if you block with the knight, then the knight on uh, d2 will be taken. So that's, that's a serious problem for, for white. Therefore, white has to accept that he needs to give back some uh, material. And um, the way to do that, that's, uh, it's not so easy. But I think starting with the move d6 would have been a very clever move because after capturing the pawn with check, now you can play the move queen c4. And black still will have to invest a bit of time uh, to regain the pawn on um, d6, after which white also has uh, possibilities to, to move the king and, and activate the rook somehow. So I think that would have been a good uh, possibility for, uh, for white. But Keimer played here the move uh, g3. And the point is that after queen takes b5 check, the king can now go to g2. But here it's the moment that finally the material balance is restored. Materials even, how should we evaluate? There are not too many pieces on the board. Is this going to be very uh, boring draw? No, not at all. It's black who is uh, playing for an advantage here. And the reason is you do have an 
outside the past pawn. And that pawn can be very well supported by the rook on a8, by the queen on d5, but also this bishop on g7, it's controlling the queening square. That's very important to, to notice, which means that the rook from a1 will have difficulties to, uh, to get there. Queen c4 played, and now you have the possibility to exchange queens, but there's no need to do that here yourself. Magnus decided to push the pawn to a5. Very, very good move. And as I said, if you do uh, swap queens here, then the diagonal for the bishop will be open, and the, the pawn is only four moves away from becoming a queen. It's not completely game over yet, but the end game is really unpleasant for, uh, for white. So rather than taking um, himself on d5, Keimer went here for the move rook a1. First getting the rook to that square, so the, the bishop doesn't hit the rook immediately, but after queen takes c4, knight takes c4, white is about to win the pawn on a5. Therefore, a4 is played and the pawn is getting more and more advanced. Still, white has uh, reasonable drawing chances, but it's an unpleasant position when you have to deal with a passed pawn, whereas white's pawn on the e-file is absolutely uh, worthless. So moves like, for instance, knight a3 to block the pawn, enabling the rook to become active, or even something like knight d4 to, to activate the knight and close the uh, diagonal for the bishop, will not be easy for um, for black to uh, to make progress, but okay, it's it's better still for black. But in the game, Keimer felt like, hey, I can play more concrete. I can play the move knight b6, attacking the rook. And let's say if the rook goes away to a6 to, to hit the knight on b6, you can simply take on a4 and that pawn is gone. But he just expected black to move the, um, the rook away. But that's not what Magnus had in mind. Look at this. He played here the key move, knight to d5, ignoring the threat, opening up the diagonal to hit the rook on a1. Now, if you do take the rook on a8, then the bishop will capture on a1. And since the, the rooks are exchanged now, it will be much easier for black to promote that uh, pawn. Look at that knight in the corner. It's totally stuck. And uh, white's pieces are simply too far away to defend against um, the march of the a pawn. So exchanging rooks is not going to work. If you take that knight, well, of course, there is bishop takes a1. So that's also not possible here in the game. You see now that there, there are huge uh, problems. Um, rook takes a4 was played and maybe it was anticipated by, by Keimer. I, I think he just blundered, in fact. Uh, but the position was uh, already quite uh, difficult, as I said. So now there's knight takes b6, and uh, you just capture the piece and defend the rook. I mean, if you swap rooks, well, it's just uh, an extra piece. We get to see something very similar in the game, at least for the moment. Keimer keeps the, the rooks on the board. But now Black's plan is to, uh, to activate the pieces. First, the knight is uh, centralized again, hits the rook. Rook b7, h6. Good technical move. Not giving the knight a chance to come to g5 and hit the pawn on uh, f7. So rook d7 is uh, played, attacking the knight. The knight goes to c3. And the plan is just to play rook a2, knight e4, and hit the pawn on uh, f2. Rook d2 therefore played. Bishop f6, useful move to, uh, to ensure the king can uh, join the action as well. h4 played, now rook a2. Good move. Forcing the exchange of, uh, of rooks. If you move the rook away, then it's uh, knight e4, as I said. And there's nothing you can do to avoid the loss of uh, the pawn on f2. So, rooks are coming off the board. And the question is, does black have winning chances? Well, that's actually not the question. It's clear that black has winning chances here. But does white have chances to survive here? Because, I mean, there are only three pawns left on the board. If white is able here to trade off the remaining pawns, it's going to be a draw. So therefore, black needs to be very careful with uh, expanding uh, and extending its uh, advantage. So first things first, knight e1, knight b4, the black knight gets back to the, to the center, the bishop goes to c3, knight to g1. And it's not about these specific moves. You see that in the next couple of moves, black is trying to improve his position. Now, the king is uh, going to uh, join play as uh, well. King f3, king f6, knight e2, bishop e5. If you look at this game, you see that consciously 
black is placing the bishop on two squares distance. And the reason is that it takes away the squares from the knight. If the knight goes to any active square like d4 or f4, the knight will just be exchanged. Knight g1, king e6, knight e2, king d5, knight g1, knight d3, king e2, knight c1, king d2, knight a2. Not really clear what Magnus is doing here. But after king d3, the knight comes to c3. And after knight f3, the knight comes to e4. So here we are. He's attacking the pawn on f2, which makes it difficult for uh, white to, uh, to do anything. He needs to keep the pawn defended. If you take on e5, well then, of course, uh, it's, it's uh, becoming more easy for, uh, for black. So king e2, bishop goes back, knight e1, king c4. You see that it's taking time, but you're never in a rush. We remember the 50 move rule. That without making any uh, any captures or pawn moves, then uh, white could claim a draw. But this is not uh, going to happen in this game. Black always will have uh, useful uh, pawn moves to avoid this uh, 50 uh, move rule. King f3, knight c3, king g2, knight d5, king f1, bishop c3. Here we are. Black wants to trade off the bishop for the knight. Knight f3, and the king comes in. King d3, knight g1, knight f6. Excellent move. Knight h3, bishop e5, covering the f4 square. More and more, that knight is getting in trouble. Knight to e4. Not that you really want to do it, but there are serious possibilities sometimes even to sacrifice one of your pieces and just wrap up the remaining pawn. So, king g2 is played. Now, finally, black is coming forward. This is essential for the uh, conversion uh, stage. Knight h3. And now... A g5. That's the kind of move Black had been reluctant to uh, to play for uh, for some time, but this is the right moment because um, your pieces are optimalized. So hg, hg, and what should Y do? I mean, if the knight goes back to g1, which was not played in the game, let me show you the following line. Then g4 can be played, and now the knight is no longer able to move. And if you ever play uh, something like um, like f3, well then you can uh, just take on, on g3. So king, king f1, knight e2, king g2, you can make a waiting move, so the king can also not go here. And if you go king h1, you can play knight f3. And finally, because black's pieces are so greatly placed, or white's pieces are just stuck at the edge of the board, black is finally succeeding in trading off the, um, the minor piece of, of white. Knight takes f3, g f3, king g1, king e2, and finally, you pick up the pawn on f2. That is the winning plan. That's the sort of plan Magnus had been uh, aiming for. But Keimer didn't want to sit and wait. He uh, played here the move f4. So that he is offering the exchange of uh, pawns. Even hits the bishop on uh, e5. And of course you can take on, um, on f4. But after e takes f4, things are not so simple. Uh, White maybe has ideas to go king f3 and g4 trade off that remaining pawn. A much better idea that was very nicely spotted by uh, Magnus is to meet f4 with a move g4. To hit the knight on a3. And the knight, once again, it's kind of stuck. If it goes to g1, then the bishop can just go away. Next move you take on e3 and game over. So white decided to take on e5. But after g takes a3, king takes a3. Knight to g5, nice move. If you go back with the king, you can just take on e3 and white cannot run with the pawn. The knight covers that square. Also, white doesn't have the chance here to uh, trade off the uh, last pawn. So easy win. King h4 was tried here, but then knight f3 check. So after king h5, you take the pawn on e5. King g5 attacking that pawn. Now, of course, if black captures on e3, it is king takes f5. And we have a theoretical draw, but black can simply save that uh, last pawn by playing here the move king e4 and pawn is defended two pawns are weak they will be taken in the next couple of moves so white resigned here for instance uh, king f6 you go knight g4 king g5 knight takes e3 and next you can uh, you can just play here the move king f3 the knight protects both the pawn on f5 as well as the potential pawn break with uh, g4 so that's not possible and that uh, brings Magnus back into, into the lead. Very, uh, very nice, convincing victory with the Benoni. So Benoni lovers will really 
like this game. I think Magnus played with a very nice uh, intention to put his opponent under pressure from the get-go. So, um, yeah, very, very impressive uh, game. Hopefully you like this video. And if you do so, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And, of course, give it a like, spread it around. Tell your friends that this is the best chess channel to follow. No, I'm just uh, kidding. But we'll really appreciate all your support, uh, guys. Thanks for doing that. And uh, stay tuned for more videos from the Granka Chess Classic.